Hey everyone, it's Corinne with Connecting with Corinne and today I'm going to be talking about um, how we can get our bodies back into more of a regulated state. So what does this mean? Um, as some of you may know, I do teach or I have been learning about trauma yoga and um, a little bit of the science behind uh, trauma and how we can, how trauma affects our body. So when we happen to be um, in a dysregulated state, which means we go into our fight, flight, uh, freeze, or even fawn responses, what tends to happen is our body is dysregulated. And this can happen quite quickly. And what usually happens is that if we're in a normal, a normal state where we're not in a traumatic event or anything like that, we can go from fight or flight back down to our regulated state quite quickly and then we feel normal. When we have a traumatic event that um, we deal with, and it can be really anything, um, our bodies aren't able to get back to that regulation, to that kind of that um, midline, I guess you would say. So how we feel in these different fight, flight, or freeze is in flight, we want to run away, we feel anxious. That's a big one, is anxiety. Um, in fight, of course, it's the anger, we wanna charge, we're trying to protect ourselves. So there is that lot of anger, um, frustration, you wanna punch a wall kind of feelings. Freeze, we just freeze. You know, we just, we don't know what to do. Our body just wants to just stay in this it doesn't know it can't move it can't it doesn't want to do the fighting it doesn't want to flight it just we're stuck we're kind of stuck in our bodies and then the fourth one is fawn and fawn is more people pleasing you don't want to be in that situation but you don't know how to get out um, and it can be also not quite freeze because you are in it but you also don't want to avoid any conflicts so it is a bit of a newer response um, that people talk about but anyway, regardless of any of these four states, our body becomes dysregulated. And how do we get back to that regulated feeling? So I'm gonna talk about five different things that we can do today when we have been in a traumatic event or even a situation that has affected us emotionally, physically, mentally, and we just need to kind of get back into a state of like, hey, I'm back into my body, I'm back into being present. So the first one I'm going to talk about is um, foot massage. So our feet have pressure points in our, um, that link to our body. So um, I don't know if anyone's heard of reflexology, but the whole idea is that our foot has a map of different areas in our body. So when we massage our foot, here we can just use the the hands and just rub our feet and then what's happening is we're stimulating and focusing on different areas of our body just by rubbing the feet so that can make us feel a little bit regulated you can also use a ball so i've got a ball here this is a ball hockey ball so it's kind of a little bit softer you can also use a tennis ball or a ball that you use for your dogs that they chew on and you can just place it on the floor to stand or put a little bit of pressure on the foot and then just rub the ball underneath the foot. So this helps with grounding. And like I said, it kind of helps connect a little bit more to your body just because you are rubbing air certain areas of your body, which will then also help stimulate um, or certain areas of your feet, which then helps stimulate certain areas of your body. So that's the first technique is foot massage. Second one we're going to talk about is breathing so especially when we have anxiety or when we're really angry or even in freeze we can tend to hold our breath or we go to the opposite where we're hyperventilating um, and that's usually by breathing out our mouth so if we notice how we're breathing just take a minute and say like am, first am i breathing or how am i breathing and then after realizing how we're breathing, we can go into taking a deep breath in through the nose and out through the nose. And it's a nice long exhale. And the reason for doing it in through the nose and out through the nose is 
It then helps um, reduce a little bit of the air through the mouth, but it, it brings in a little bit more sense of calmness as well. So breathing in through the nose and out. Helps relax. You can let the shoulders go down, releasing any tension you have because we hold, I tend to hold tension in my chest and shoulders. So that just exhaling allows things to soften. Roll those shoulders down. Take a deep breath. And then notice how that feels. So that's the breathing. Um, the third one we're going to talk about is um, just being aware of our surroundings. So when we are in a safe place and we start to feel that anxiety or even anger, and it's like because just thoughts are coming in and out and we're in a safe place and all of a sudden just these thoughts are coming, focus on something in the room or the room itself and just open up the senses. So maybe focusing on um, an object with the color and just noticing how bright that color is. Maybe noticing how that color makes you feel um, or even just noticing the temperature in the room and how it feels on your skin or just even like the clothes you're wearing. It's like, okay, I can feel just the softness of my hoodie that I'm wearing. Um, and just, or the smells of the room. Does it smell like um, certain essential oils that you may have been using or even just like smell of food or whatever. And by kind of opening up our senses, it brings us back to this present moment of we are actually here right now, not thinking about maybe the, an event that has happened or whatever the situation is that has gotten into, got, got us into this fight, flight, or freeze or fawn response. Um, and then just know as you're in this space that you're safe. And I think that's the key is that to know that, Hey, I'm safe here. I'm okay. And then that will bring you down a little bit more. So that is, we've talked about the foot massage, the breathing and the room. And the next one we're going to talk about number four is tapping. We'll talk about tapping. <laughs> so tapping, um, or thumping and this brings energy. So in different modalities, uh, like Qigong, um, in some yoga classes, tapping is actually really good because this also helps, um, regulate our nervous system. It also can affect our lymphatic system and help drain things out. So there's a few good things about tapping or thumping on our body. So the first one we're going to do is just kind of by our collarbone. So you can see this kind of hoodie, but you can, there's my collarbone. I'm bending it so you can see it right there. So by our collarbone, you can dig your fingers in and you can go at the top and you can either use your fingertips or like more of your fingers and your hands and just tap. Tap along the collarbone or you can tap, dig a little bit deeper inside and then around. And this helps stimulate the vagus nerve, which then helps us get a little bit more regulated. You can also just do the more thumping and you can do the chest. That's the second area is chest. And again, you can use your fingertips. So I curl my fingers a little bit more, or you can go flat and tap. And then the third area of where we're going to tap is kind of by our armpit. So you can do the armpit and that's a really good one for your lymphatic system. But you can also kind of tap along where your seams are. So like seams of your shirts or hoodies where it reaches down by the arm and along the sides. So you can tap there as well. And that feels really good. So one side and you can go down, work your way down. And that also helps with drainage. And it also brings a little bit of movement of energy in the body as well. So after you do some tapping, you may notice that there might be um, some tingling sensations. So it's just bringing energy around and moving it around the body. And then you could, the last place you can do tapping is on your face. So just kind of underneath here where our little, um, the bone is underneath our eyes, you can tap around here. You can do your eyebrows and around. 
If you want, you can even do bet underneath between your nose and mouth, on your chin, and you can work middle out on the forehead. If you want, you can do a little bit more of a padding, but I like to use those fingertips on this one. And then just notice how that feels after doing that. So that is number four, which was the tapping and thumping. The last one I'm going to be talking about today is humming. And humming also brings vibration into the chest, stimulating the vagus nerve and helping us uh, get into more of a regulated state. So there's a few ways you can hum. You can obviously just hum, take a deep breath and just hum a song or just hum a note. Um, you can also ohm or you can buzz like a, like a bee. So I'll show you all, or I'll, yeah, I'll demonstrate all three of these. So the first one is humming. So take a deep breath, closing the mouth and just humming. And you might start to feel a little bit of vibration in the chest. The second one is an ohm. And the ohm is interesting because you take a deep breath. You make it O oh with your mouth, say O, oh, and then close the M, and that's the hum. Um, and the third one is buzzing, so Z. Z now I find the buzzing actually stimulates the chest a little bit more. Um, you might feel a little bit more in the throat. So it depends on what feels good for you. So you could try all three. Um, you can do this with family members, um, especially with kids if they're definitely anxious or are just having problems breathing or just feeling scared or whatever it is that they're feeling. You can just hum them a song, they can hum together and just notice how it feels afterwards or even just hum, just say let's hum together. Mm -hmm. and see how you feel. So I hope these five techniques can help you feel a little bit more regulated. I know in today's society, we're all over the place emotionally, um, mentally, um, and it just, it's been putting a strain on us. And I feel like we're going more into fight, flight, fawn, freeze. And I feel like that even though this, and it, this could be trauma for some people. So I'm not going to, um, sugarcoat this and say it may not be, it could very well be. So um, if you do feel yourself dysregulated and that you just want to get back into kind of feeling a little bit more calmer, um, a little bit more regulated, these are some great tips for you. All right, I will see you guys next time. Bye.